Hey, what's up guys? Dallas Regionals has just concluded and there was a stream there. So that means I'm coming at you with coming at you guys with the VOD reviews. We're here in round one. Oh, round two. Excuse me. We're here in round two. Both players 1-0 already. Ian Robb versus Ross Cawthon. Ian is playing Drampagarb, Sigalith, um, and Ross is playing Vespa Queen. I think Ross is going first here. We see the farewell letter to start it off. Uh, and the bench, uh, thinking about benching it. I don't see a reason not to bench it. Out. The rest of his hand does not look good. So uh, a little bit of a slow, very, very much a slow start here from Ross. Uh, he does have a battle compressor in hand, so I would like to see him play that. Okay, so I don't. I'm almost positive I see a battle compressor in Ross's hand. Um, there's no reason not to play this. It'll actually just increase your odds of hopefully drawing a supporter next turn. Um, right here from Ross, I'd like to see him go battle compressor, get rid of two dead Pokemon. Uh, probably like Gallade or something like that. I did see the Machoke in his hand, so I assume he plays uh, the Maxi's engine. So we can get rid of like two dead cards here, as well as a... Um, get rid of two dead cards, as well as a like, Sycamore. Um, to, if you top deck a Via Seeker, increase your chances um, of having an out on your turn. So I don't like holding the Battle Compressor here from Ross. I'm almost positive I see a Battle Compressor in the hand. It's really hard for me to go back and see stuff on the... Twitch VOD. Um, but yeah, I think there's a battle compressor there in Ross's hand, so I would definitely like to see him play that. Uh, we got an Ultra Ball here from Ian. Plays Latias. It plays Latias, first of all. That's a. Oh, it's the one that can donk. Okay, so he's looking to donk Combees here. I don't. Not a huge fan of this in general in the deck. It's a little cheesy, I feel like, but yeah, he does play it. Gets rid of a Trash and Lanch Garbodor as well. Uh, we'll see what he grabs. He already has a Drampa and a Trubbish, so I don't expect anything like Lele or anything like that. Uh, I'm curious if he does play the Oracorio. I know there was quite a few. Drampa Guard players who are playing Oracorio at Dallas. We'll see if he also has it included as well. There's the Trubbish to start with. Um, I think I saw Sudowoodo uh, in his deck. What else? Other Drampa. Yeah, not sure. There's a Wonder Tag, and he's going with a Juniper. All right. So, pretty solid start here from Ian. Drampa in the active is not great. And with if he doesn't play... Uh, Oracorio, this matchup is definitely tough, and his win condition on the win condition on Ian's side is pretty much uh, Garbotoxin in play plus N. Hope my opponent whiffs. So that's if, if Ian doesn't play Oracorio, that turns into his win condition. If he does play Oracorio, his win condition is just uses Oracorio as many times as possible. So we'll see uh, what he's able to do here. He benches the Sudowoodo. Not a huge fan of the Sudowoodo bench. Uh, it's just kind of unnecessary. In this it doesn't really do anything in this matchup for Ian. So I'm not a huge fan of the benching of the Sudowoodo. It's oh, it's not terrible, I guess, because you do already have two Trubbish set up. Uh, and there's the GX attack from Ian. And he's shuffling up. Gonna be using the big wheel immediately here, immediately here on the second turn. And, uh, and yeah, getting the 10 cards from that. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the Sudowoodo bench. It doesn't really do anything for him. Uh, it's not like a big, big deal in this matchup at all. He might not know what Ross is playing, though. I guess that is also possible. Uh, but when you see the firewall letter, I mean, you should just kind of know. So we see a teammate stop tag here from Ross. Once again, I'm almost positive. Yeah, it looks like there's a battle. Yeah, there's a battle compressor right there. Would have definitely liked to have seen Ross play the battle compressor and set up for set up a little bit more from Ross and actually uh, thin out his deck a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna play it now. So playing it a turn late, there was no reason for him to have not played it last turn. Yeah, he could have got rid of Egg. Uh, there's probably a fighting Pokemon here in here. He could have gotten rid of. And then also get rid of the Juniper. That way, Via Seeker is now active. I mean, if he had top decked Via Seeker this turn, he still could have gone Battle Compressor for Juniper, sure. But he also could have top decked that Egg or a different Pokemon he could have gotten rid of with the Battle Compressor. So, yeah, not a big fan of him not playing the Battle Compressor last, last turn at all. Definitely should have played it last turn. There's no reason for him not to have played it last turn. Here we go. We see the Juniper comes out. So, if he does top deck Via Seeker, he will have access to that. Um. And yeah, there's no really real reason to keep the Mr. Mime in there. I, I can't think of, so I would like to see him discard that as well. Probably the most useless Pokemon uh, that he could possibly get rid of. And then we'll probably see him go ahead and go Sky Return into Vespa Queen. There's really no way for Ian to KO the Vespa Queen, so there's no reason for him to hold off on playing playing the Vespa Queen. Uh, or no reason for no way for Ian to KO Ross's Vespa Queen. So there's really no reason for Ian or Ross, geez, to not Sky Return into the Vespa Queen. You can even hit it for 60, actually. You have the choice ban. So, yeah, we should definitely see the sky return for 60 here. There's really, like I said, no way uh, for Ian to knock this out. So, there's the sky return for 60. Oh, 30 should be 60. Yep, there it is. And over to Ian. Ian top decks a psychic energy. Really doesn't do anything for him. 
There's only one item in Ross's discard pile as well. Uh, Ian could actually go ahead and set up the Lele here. I think that's probably what he should go for. The Righteous Edge for 20 on the active Esper Queen, and then attach to, or get Lele ready to go if he has a DC in hand, which I do think I see a DCE there. Just go ahead and throw that on the Lele, or a Psychic on the Trubbish if he doesn't plan to shuffle the hand. Uh, but there might, end, there might not end up with enough items in the discard pile, uh, so you don't really want to commit fully to a trash line chair, I don't think. But I do like the ability to lock Arkham out. You know he has a Shaman in hand. Um, I don't even know if Ross could draw cards with it, though, actually, on his turn, but Ian doesn't know that, so you may as well try and limit your opponent's uh, ability usage. Um, there's Ace Arola. Oh, Ace Arola on the Drampa. Okay, I like that as well. Uh, the second Ace Arola in hand. Parallel Cities Away is on Sudowoodo. That's cool. Ability lock. Oh, gets the Choice Man back as well. All right. So Ian's in a pretty good spot here. Of also the Trash Lanch. Not a huge fan of that. I don't think that was necessary yet. Uh, but it probably doesn't matter. Or uh, maybe it's just fine. Mm, I'm a little torn on the Trash Lanch Evolve there. So the camera is only shaking a little bit here. Hopefully it calms down in just a second. Um, so it looks like Ross is eyeing up the Guzma. And actually, yeah, the Guzma on the Garbodor is super good here. Um, I do like the Evolve of the Garbodor out of Ian. But I think we're definitely going to see Ross Guzma that uh, Garbodor up and then maybe sky return it hit it for 30 uh, but then there's a possibility that Ian can just go via secret Ace Arola so yeah I really actually don't want to see the sky return here from Ross yeah he's just gonna go with the pass so now Ian needs to either start attaching to the Garbodor which I think he just kind of has to do or he needs the field blower plus float stone which is not likely in the near future I don't think he does have a rainbow so he could actually sky or uh, Ace Arola the garb uh, I don't think he has a Via Seeker in hand. Um, he's just going to go with Attached Drip up Pass. Uh, I'm probably just hoping to hit a Via Seeker here. Um, the thing is, though, that now that he evolved the Trash Alanche Garb, he doesn't have a Trubbish to reestablish the Ability Lock Garb with. Um, so that is that is a reason to not evolve the uh, the Trubbish there. On top of that, if, if Ross had just pulled off like a Guzma, knock out your Ability Lock Garbador, then he would have been in the same spot where he couldn't immediately look for an Ability Lock Garb and then put one back in play. So I kind of just don't like the... Uh, the trash lanch evolve at all it kind of limits your plays and i don't think you were really scared of your trubbish being knocked out uh, maybe you were a little bit yeah i guess it's possible he knocks it out right we do see an ultra ball here from ross he's going for a combi um i don't expect him to bench it at all yet i think we're just get, ross is going to be just waiting until he can knock this out before he does anything definitely doesn't want to attack into it he doesn't know ian has rainbow in hand so he doesn't want to trigger the uh Ace Arola? Oh, no. It looks like he's just going to go in here. Oh, it looks like he's going to go with the Intelligence Gathering for to draw some cards. Um, choice Ban, I don't think it really matters here. Maybe a little bit better on the bench. Yeah, I think the Choice Ban is definitely actually better on the bench. Yeah, the Choice Ban actually on the active, I don't like it. I don't really like. So the Choice Ban on the active, either you knock out this Garb first, and then Ian will just come up and knock this out with Trash Lance or Lele, which means you just lose the Choice Ban and don't get use out of it. Or, now that you're hitting this, Ian will be able to Ace roll this and knock out your Vespa Queen anyway. So the Choice Band actually never makes sense on the active Vespa Queen here. It should always be on the Bench Combi, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely should always be on the uh, the Bench the bench Combi. And then Intelligence Gathering. And he also... Oh, he's, oh no, he's doing zero damage here. Uh, actually, yeah. He, I still like the I still like the, the Choice Band on the Bench Combi, but he actually is doing zero damage here because of the Parallel City. I forgot about that. So this is meaning he's not giving Ian access to the Ace roll apply. Uh, which is actually a big deal. Uh, but yeah, I still would like to see the choice man on the bench, the bench combi. I guess then Ian could Guzma knock it out and take away the choice band. Uh, maybe it is better on the active. No, because if Ian ever gets out of the active, then you're still in the same spot of him just being able to get rid of the choice band. And both the most likely situation here is that Ross knocks out the Garbodor, and then the, the best we can get knocked out, which means you just lose the choice band. Um, I guess the Guzma is maybe just as likely. Yeah, I guess the Guzma knockout the Combi is actually like kind of just as likely. So maybe it's just like 50-50 there, actually. It feels kind of close. There is going to be the Guzma knockout, so Ross does get to keep the Choice Band. Uh, but he doesn't have a ton of Pokemon in the discard pile, so I don't think he's actually going to be able to knock out this Lele. We'll see if those two, how good those two cards were, plus the top deck. Um, for the B Revenge, nothing. He's got the teammates, so he can probably get the knockout here. He has a Battle Compressor on hand as well. Yeah, so he can probably get the knockout here on this Lele. I would imagine the knockout is definitely coming maybe no i can't quite pull off that uh, and then he has the teammates definitely wants to get another draw supporter off the teammates but he i think that knockout is actually more important i think if he doesn't get this knockout he's definitely in a tough spot so he should play for the knockout for sure i think and then from there if he can fit one of the spots off the teammates to get a draw supporter go for it there's ultra ball away is of shrika and shaman probably just gonna get another combi here or an eevee which he is eyeing up the eevee 
Let's see, I don't, yeah, I don't quite know how many Pokemon are in there. That's going to be the hard thing for me to tell. Um, I would like to see him play for the knockout here. We'll see if he actually does. So he could grab this Eevee, and then if he could teammates for another Battle Compressor and a Sycamore. Um, I think that's what he would want to go for. It's definitely possible he can get it. Yeah, right? Yeah, so there's the teammates. Second Battle Compressor plus Sycamore should be able to do that. Uh, he might even be able to go... I don't think he has enough Pokemon in his discard pile to grab something like DCE plus Sycamore. Um, or Junipers, I guess, in this case. Yeah, so there's the Battle Compressor. And he looks like he's eyeing up a Via Seeker. I think he should probably just grab a Juniper, see more cards than that for sure, and save the Via Seekers for later. I know he's going to go with the Via Seeker. It'll probably be for a Juniper either way. That's kind of why I want him just to see him grab a Juniper. There is the Battle Compressor. Should see a lot of the ability Pokemon leave the game now. He's eyeing up the Lele. Probably see the Zebstrika. Yep. Or is that the Blitzel? And then maybe the Zebstrika as well. Should probably see the Unknown starting to hit the discard pile. There's a second Shaman I see in there. That'll probably leave on the second Battle Compressor. Um, yep, there's the unknown about to head out. Two unknowns, maybe a third, if not the Shaman, I think, for sure. I don't think he ever plans to knock out the Ability Lock Garbodor, so it's really just going to be him trying to find attackers and DCEs from here on out. That's all he's looking for. The Ability Pokemon aren't going to be hitting the field anytime soon. Eyeing up maybe the Parallel City? Mm, looks like two Pokemon and Orangaroo. Orangaroo is going over the Shaman. Okay, seems, seems reasonable. Yeah, I guess the Shaman's kind of your best draw ability Pokemon, so that's the one you kind of want to hold on to if you're going to hold on to any of them. So yeah, we see the three more Pokemon hit the discard pile, so I'm assuming this is going to be enough for knockout. And that's why he got the Via Seeker. And yeah, there's be revenge for the knockout. All right, so now Ross is actually in kind of in a kind of in a fine spot. Had a really rough start, but now it's looking okay here for Ross. You see Ian use teammates, searching out two cards. It looks like Stretcher is going to be one of them. I have no idea what the second one's going to be. It was Stretcher and something. I didn't actually see what the other one is. Has a treasure to get rid of the Bridget. This should probably be for a Trubbish. There's a Trub. His bench is now full uh, because of the Parallel City limiting his bench. Oh, yeah, so he KO'd through the Parallel City as well, even. All right. And then there's the trash Lanch knockout on the best queen. So I'm curious as to what he teammates for, but I can't quite see what the cards are. One of them looked like a cleft key or something, but I doubt that's what it was. Um, I'm sure we'll figure out on the next turn what Ian's got going on in the hand. All right, so we see the Eevee send up here from Ross. He has uh, a best queen, Combi, not a best queen, Combi in hand, Flareon in hand, and if he has two Via Seekers, we'll probably see Via Seeker for teammates here. It looks like there is two Via Seekers, so there's no reason not to go Via Seeker for teammates here. On Ross's side, I, I'm assuming that's what we're gonna see. And then he has Seeker for the turn after for either another teammate, but most likely a Juniper. I mean, if he draws well enough, I guess it could just be for a, a what's it called. So we should see DCE plus Vespa Queen here, maybe. Maybe DCE plus a Via Seeker, so you can just keep chaining teammates uh, pretty comfortably here from Ross. Uh, but probably for a probably for a Vespa Queen. Looks like he's adding up two DCEs actually. Actually, yeah, yeah I kind of do like that actually. Yeah, two DCEs. You go DCE actively. You chain Vespa Queen next turn. You see that, and I think he does have an Ultra Ball in hand, so he does have access to both of those attackers. Yeah, take a knockout here, plus top deck next turn, he'll have two things to Ultra Ball away. He's going to change it up. I think he went for a another Combi. Uh, so he went DCE Combi here, I believe. We'll see. Yep, DCE Combi. Combi comes down, player on active. DCE active. Combi uh, makes about as much sense as a Vespa Queen, I guess. Not sure if one is actually strictly better than the other, though. We see the Via Seeker. Or uh, or the stretcher for the trash lanch. I'm actually I don't understand why Ian I think Ian maybe rushes turn I don't actually understand why he sent up the trash lanch. He should have sent up the Drampa here. Um, and then attacked with this this turn, because now that he has the damage in play on the Garbodor, he can take knockouts with Gar uh, the Drampa and then go follow up with the Trash Lanch. But once this gets knocked out, he actually can't take knockouts with Drampa unless he finds a muscle band if he even plays that. So I definitely would have liked to have seen send up the see Ian send up the Drampa here and attack with that first, and then follow up with the Garbodor on the next turn. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't quite understand this play here from Ian. Unless he just knows he's gonna hit a Muscle Band, I guess. But I don't even know if he plays Muscle Band. Um, I think we've only seen Choice Band so far from Ian. I don't think he plays Muscle Band. He might though. We'll see. There's his end for four. Yeah, definitely would like to see the Drampa have him. Ooh, definitely would like to have seen him send up the Drampa here. That means he knows for sure 
on the next turn he can attack with uh, the trash Lanch, and he has back-to-back -back attackers. I guess this play allows him to go to go uh, Garbodor into Garbodor, but at that point you might have no damage on your bench, and once again you just can't attack with Drampa. So then even then you still can't, ha you don't have a way to close out the game. So I definitely would like to have seen Drampa come up, and then you know for sure next turn you'll have a viable attacker in the Garbodor. Uh, we look at Ross's hand, he can actually pull off a Maxis, I think. He has Maxi Stretcher, Special Charge, and then something else. It look, when I saw it immediately, Stretcher, Float Zone, yeah. Stretcher, Float Zone, Vest between Maxi. So, pretty good hand here from Ross. Unfortunately, he has two DCE in the discard pile. So, it might be tough for him to actually get a knockout. Uh, hit, a, hit a DCE here to get a knockout. So, we can see the Trash Lanch draw a couple prizes here. Oh, there's the DCE immediately for Ross. Uh, I don't know if it really matters. He definitely wants to save the Galley for last. Yeah, so I just get rid of this one with the float zone. That makes sense to me. I actually think I would like to see right here from Ross. I think I would like to see him go computer search and grab special charge. He's got a via seeker in hand, so he's set for that next turn. But if this guy gets knocked out, or even he just gets righteous edge plus end, can he end to two with one DCE left in deck? As well as uh, he has special charges, but if you just like only find like a juniper. You need to get this, you can't like Juniper, find special charge, use special charge, and then hit the DCE, you shuffled back in. So not a big fan of just not just go ahead and using, Ross is going ahead and using computer search there. Uh, you know Ian plays quite a few N probably and plays four via Seeker, so he has access to a lot of Ns. So I think I would have liked, definitely liked to have seen Ross play computer search, grab special charge, use it immediately, knowing that the way Ian wins this game is N plus uh, ability lock Garvin play. That's just kind of Ian's win condition. And this is going back immediately back to what I was saying Last turn, Ian just actually has no way to knock out this Vesper Queen now because he didn't attack with the Drampa instead. Uh, never mind. He has a Muscle Band. There we go. Yep, and there's the end there. Benches the Lele as well because he doesn't want to draw that, and he knows if Ross draws two prizes, Ross wins. Anyway, so once again, we would have really liked to have seen Ross play the Computer Search, put the Special Charge, get the Special Charge, put two DCs back in the deck, increase his odds of, his odds of outs to finding something, to finding a DCE for sure next turn because that's all he needs at this point is a DCE. So... Yeah, did, definitely did not like Ross holding the computer search there. Um, sure, he would have had to get rid of a Via Seeker and the computer search, so you could argue, well, then he could just, if he hits the Via Seeker, but if he hits the Via Seeker, he still needs to find a DCE off it, but if he just hits a DCE, he's good to go. So, N to 2, I think I actually just saw a DCE in Ross's hand. We'll see. Uh, looks like he's just going with the Righteous Hedge here, actually, from Ian, even though he could knock out the active. There's a Battle Compressor here, Battle Compressor here from Ross. Uh, there is the last DC in the deck as well as the computer search, so there's a high chance actually that Ross just wins the game on this turn. Looks like he's going to get rid of Lele, I would assume the Shaman, maybe the, his own N as well. You don't really need to keep around another Vespa Queen in this matchup. You can get rid of a, the Vespa Queen or a Combi, but it looks like it is going to be Lele N. I think Vespa Queen, keep the, go ahead and keep the Shaman. Yeah, I, I, keeping the Shaman for as long as possible makes sense to me, I like that. Uh, and then I think we do have the Juniper here from Ross, so we will see, we, we will see him be playing the Juniper. Looking for that last DCE in the deck. And trying to close out the game right here. There's seven. I don't see DC. I don't see computer search. I see field blower. Oh, he does play a field blower. Alright, so he is gonna be able to set up with Shaman. So we can see the field blower here. Get rid of the stadium and probably the choice band. There's no reason to get rid of one of the get rid of the muscle band, actually. That would be fine. Uh, I wouldn't hate to see that. Yeah, he does go for the muscle band. I actually kinda like that. Then we get the special charge for two, and now he has four outs in the deck, and his deck is not very big. So I expect him to actually hit the win here off of the setup for two. Yeah, his deck's got, like, what, seven, eight cards, it looks like. So I expect the game to end here on this turn, even though it's only a setup for two here. Oh, and he's got the premonition on top of that. Yeah, so he's digging for five. I actually think it's impossible for him to whiff here. Uh, it's taking his time, so maybe he, is, maybe he didn't quite get there. One, two. Nope, there it is. DC to Gallade. Retreat. Knockout. All right, so we do see Ross here taking game one. Um, yeah, a couple small things. I would like to have seen, like I said, I'd like to have seen Ian attack with the Drampa. I'm not sure why he didn't. He does play the Muscle Band, but I still think it's just right to attack with the... Uh, I still think it's right to attack with the Drampa there to you know you have another attacker for the next turn. Ross, I would like to have seen him computer search for the special charge uh, on the turn before his last turn there. I'm trying to get a little bit closer. All right, so it looks like, yeah, we have Ian go first. Juniper gets a rainbow on the Trubbish, open Pseudo Widow, float to the Pseudo Widow, another Trubbish, and then he limits Ross's bench to three. Ross opens the Blitzel, benches Ditto, and then Ultra Balls away Juniper and Colrus. 
Probably top deck ditto. I would assume. I assume you'd rather open ditto on Ross's side. But actually, having the Blitzel get knocked out is actually probably a little bit better. Actually, the more I think about it, because you're not really going to be able to use abilities too often in this matchup. So let the Blitzel, Blitzel get knocked out. Save the ditto to evolve it into something, and just attack with it later. Yeah, actually, that might be a little bit better. Uh, but if you don't have access to abilities, then the ditto's going to get knocked anyway. But maybe it doesn't. Yeah, you never know. All right, be a seeker for Juniper here from Ross, drawing seven. Gets a DCE and a... Oh, he plays Muck as well, it looks like. That's interesting. Yeah, gets a DCE and the Choice Band on a Combi. Got a Battle Compressor here. Excuse me. Battle Compressor here, getting rid of Egg, and I assume probably Machoke uh, and Gallade. There's no reason really to keep those guys around. Could save the Machoke if he thinks he plays Oracorio. Uh, nope, there it goes. Uh, he's got an Ultra Ball and something else in hand. I didn't quite see. He's got an Ultra Ball. He's got an Unknown. So we'll probably see that Farewell Letter happen for sure this turn. You don't want to hold on to that thing because, you know, Ian, there's a good chance Ian will just Ability Lock you next turn. So I see Unknown, Muck, Mr. Mime, a Battle Compressor. I'm going to go with Unknown first. I don't see a reason not to go ahead and play the other Battle Compressor in Ross's hand, though. And then he plays this one down immediately. So I don't quite understand that play from Ross at all. Uh, he definitely should have used, because he got another Battle Compressor in hand before this one that he unknown Farewell Letter into. You ideally want a Farewell Letter into, like, a Via Seeker or a Juniper here. So there's no reason not to go ahead and play it on that other Battle Compressor first. Get rid of three more cards that are not Supporters or DCE or Attackers. They're, they're definitely those three cards in there. Then you Unknown Farewell Letter and try and hit either, I mean, another Battle Compressor is actually just fine here, uh, to hit. But you'd rather Farewell Letter after you maximize your Battle Compressors. There we go, see him getting rid of Lele. Has an Ultra Ball. Definitely doesn't want to use it for Shaman. So we might see Ultra Ball here for another just Farewell Letter. You really don't want to put a GX in play in this matchup. Uh, he's already getting rid of the Farewell Letters, which I'm not a huge fan of. And he's he's kind of keep, he's keeping the Zeb Striker in there. But yeah, I'd rather just like chain abilities this turn. Knowing you can get ability locked next turn. But you can't evolve this Blitzel to Zeb Striker this turn. So you're kind of like playing like you want to rather have access to the Zeb Striker next turn. Instead of the Unknowns this turn. Because you don't. Because you might just not get abilities at all next turn. So I definitely want to see him keep the unknowns over the Zeb Strike. I couldn't quite see what else it was all in his deck. So I don't know what else I'd rather get rid of. Eyeing up the Ultra Ball here from Ross. I think he might go ahead and commit to a Shaman here. Oh no, he's going to go ahead and pass. Whoa. Interesting pass from Ross. So he's basically saying that Ian's not going to get out Ability Lock Arm. Weird. Definitely. We I feel like that's a very weird pass there from Ross. With the hand he had, he was basically saying Ian's not going to get on Ability Lock Arb, or he knows Ro Ian's going to play N. Because I didn't see a Via Seeker or a Juniper in his hand, but he had an Ultra Ball, which could get an Unknown, a Lele, a Shaman. Interesting. Okay, so I, I don't I don't like that play at all from Ross. He also held a Battle Compressor, which could have thinned out his deck by three more cards. Um, so I think definitely a missequencing initially by Ross when he used the Farewell Letter before playing both Battle Compressors. And then not having a draw support at all in his hand, it chooses to not Ultra Ball before he knows his opponent could potentially Ability Lock Arb him. Which I think we will definitely just see Ian do here. Uh, unless he has no way to attack, then I guess he would maybe go for a Trash Lanch attack. But I think I'd rather Ability Lock my opponent here anyways. There's the Trash Lanch. So it looks like he's going to be just Trash Lanch KO Blitzel here. And there's going to be no Ability Locking here going on. But looking at Ross's hand, he has at least has an attack, but not much follow up from there. There's the Trash Lanch, DCE to Drampa, Retreat, and it's going to be the Trash Lanch for the Knockout. I think at this point, uh, what's it called? Uh, Ross probably does, or Ian probably does not play uh, Unknown. Or not Unknown. Uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, Oracorio. We haven't seen it this, at this point, so I don't think he, he probably just doesn't play Oracorio. Uh, so Ross can't quite Maxis, I don't think yet, uh, because he has no way to... Oh no, he can put this up strike on the Ditto. Okay, so he actually can Maxis. He can Maxis and Shaman for zero. All right, so we'll probably see the Maxis here from Ross because he can bench the Shaman, set up for nothing. Stretcher, probably grab an unknown, it looks like. Oh, no, he'll have to grab the Zeb Shrika. No, he has Zeb Shrika in hand. So Stretcher for an unknown, bench it, and then uh, Maxis get Gallied. So Stretcher grabs unknown to the bench. And a Farewell Letter. Oh, his bench is limited to three, so he actually has a Farewell Letter. Oh, okay, okay, I missed that. Gets a Battle Compressor, so he will be able to still pull off the Maxis here. Battle Compressor, probably get rid of Mr. Mime. He had Mr. Mime, Lele. I guess you could keep one Lele in the deck. That's not terrible. Uh, has to get rid of Mr. Mime. I don't know. Some other shenanigans. There's Muck in there. That's right. Mr. Mime, Muck. 
Maybe the Lele here. I, I would go with the Lele here, I think, if I was Ross. Maybe the Unknown before the Lele. I don't know. If you have access to abilities, you're probably cruising from here anyway because you have some Striker set up. I'm going to keep it the Lele, get rid of the Unknown, it looks like. I don't know if there's a... I don't actually know which one's better there. Yeah, so not a great turn... Not even... Not a great... Not a, a particularly great turn one or turn two from Ian. The team, turn one was okay. He managed to set up pretty reasonably. Turn two, definitely not a great follow-up. Uh, DCE looks like to the Eevee. Yep, there's the Zepstrika. Oh, he can't actually, uh... Shaman set up for zero and then Maxis. I missed that as well. Oops. <laughs> but he has his F-Striker, so he'll be able to sprint and get out of this. That's right. He only has actually three bench spots. You can't just Maxis there. Um, four card hand here from Ross. We got the special charge and an N. Looks like he's just eyeing up the N. It makes sense to me. Just go ahead and N. He had a special charge and a Ultra Ball and a Parallel City. Probably just wants to keep the special charge for sure there, I think. So I, I like shuffling that back in. No, re no need to Ultra Ball that away. Get something else. Shuffle it back in and go from there. That's right. He can't ma he can't bench Shaman set up for zero and then Maxis. Bench limited to three. I'm keeping up, I'm keeping up, I swear. Um, yeah. And here. Six for Ross. Five for Ian. Another combi here for Ross. Field blower as well. That'll probably be pretty useful later on. Um, even as soon as next turn. I don't know if he has knockout here. No, he definitely has knockout here. Alright. Twelve Pokemon this card pile. Yeah. Easy knockout. And there we go. Boom. Be revenge knockout. Currently, Ian has no way to knock out the active. Well, as I say that, he's got the Muscle Band DCE. Definitely wants to find Ability Lock Garb here, finally, and set it up. There's Structure for 1 for Trubbish, and then I assume Via Seeker for N. Yep, Via Seeker for N. Definitely wants to see Ability Lock Garb here, and uh, try and shut Ross down. That's re That really is Ian's win condition here, is Ability Lock Garb plus N. That's kind of the only thing he has going for him. As a win condition. This matchup is kind of unfavored. You just don't have enough one prize attackers on Ian's side. You only have the two trash alanches. So you have to use GXs like the Lele or the Drampa eventually. Uh, and then at that point, they win the prize trade as the best Queen player. Uh, here we go. No ability lock garb. He does have the knockout, but I don't think that's going to be enough. Uh, yeah, Ross's hand is great. Pretty much has everything he could ever need. Yeah, Ross's hand is <laughs> super good. Uh, and there sh he should easily be able to get a knockout here. Gonna go ahead and send up the combi. Uh, he could even go for like a Guzma knockout on one of the Trubbishes ahead of time, which I actually kind of like and kind of ignore the Drampa for a turn. Mm, maybe it's just better just to deal with the immediate threat, especially with how hard it is for Ian to actually even find a way to like clean up uh, your current attacker on Ross's side. I don't know if he propped here. He definitely has access to propagation, so he could just propagate here. We'll see. I think he's trying to pull off the. Oh, he can definitely pull off the Maxis here. So we'll probably see that. Yeah, there's the Propagate. Propagate Ultra Ball. Get rid of Egg in Parallel. Gets a Vespa Queen. I'm actually not sure why he didn't send it. It's possible he whiffs the attack here, unless he propagates the DCE. Thinking about playing the Compressor. He's going to go with playing the Compressor. Thin out his deck a little bit more. Should see the Lele finally leave the deck. I don't know what else. Maybe the Shaman as well. Yeah, probably see the Shaman leave the deck as well. Maybe get rid of the Field Blower. Nope, he's going to leave the Shaman, it looks like. Going to have to prop again. Where is it at? There it is. Propagate. Computer search that away with a Via Seeker. Probably grab a DCE here. Get rid of those two. I assume we're going to see a DCE grab here. I up the Floatstone instead. Then I actually have, I, if he I gets a floatstone here, I have no idea why he sent up the combi and not the Flareon and then, or the Eevee and then grab a Flareon. Because he definitely could have got enough, good, and he definitely got enough Pokemon in the discard pile through a knockout here. Maybe he really wants to try and take out the knockout with the Gallade, which I guess is okay. But now it's possible he whiffs the KO here on Ross's side. And I think he did. Uh, not fully, he can still use Sprint on Zebstrika, but I'm actually super confused as to why he didn't just send up the Eevee and then Ultra Ball for Flareon. Unless he has no Flareons in his deck, I guess that would be the only reason, which is actually possible. It's possible he has no Flareons in his deck. So if that's the case, if he, it looks like he's playing the, the double Flareon list. So if he prizes double Flareon, it still made sense to put down the Eevee and attach to it when he did. So it's probably very possible he just like prized, um, prized the Flareons. There's a DCE and another Vesper Queen line. All right, so he's going to be able to attack this turn for sure. He does have to sprint, which he's rid of a choice band and a Via Seeker, I believe, which is not great. But mm, Choice of the active Vespa Queen. 
then sprint for four. I think here as Ross, you probably want to attack with Gallade, because, yeah, I think you actually definitely want to attack with Gallade here. You just have to assume that the ability to lock Arb is going to eventually get set up, Premonition becomes useless, and then if you get End, and then Gallade, and then they attack with the Trash Lanch, and you just... And you're stuck with just Gallade as your attacker, and you don't find a supporter for the turn off the end, then you actually just can't even knock out a trash lance with the Gallade. So you yeah, definitely wanna like using it, like like seeing him use Gallade here. Um, and yeah, take the knockout here on the Drampa for the two prizes, go down to three. Now Ian really needs to find a trash lance. That's his really his only way out of this one. He needs to find trash lance. He needs to find ability lock garb, and it looks like he is out of ends, or he's just foregoing the end this turn. Uh, try and find a trash lance at least, and knock this out. There's another float stone down to the Lele. Field blower. I mean, I think you just get rid of choice ban float. No reason to really get rid of the parallel city. I can't that I can see. Definitely needs to see Trash Land Psychic here. I don't think he got it. I do see computer search, I think, maybe. So he can maybe get it. We'll see. Definitely needs Trash Land plus Psychic here. And then N plus ability lock guard plus a knockout on the next turn. He doesn't even have any psychics in his discard pile. So he's just kind of struggling here right now. We'll see what he gets here. Uh, the super rod in, was it Trash Lanch and Double Drampa? Not even that great of a super rod, the Double Drampa there. There's a Trubbish to the bench. That's very good. That means he was able to set a back to back Trash Lanch plus the ability lock guard. But then he goes ahead and he whiffs the knockout here. Uh, so still a great spot here from Ross. Ross needs to draw three prizes to close out this game. Could see him go with the retreat into Flareon uh, for the knockout. Could also just see him... Well, you don't really want to attack and pass. doesn't feel great. There's a DCE on top. There's a Guzma up there as well. He might just go with the pass here. Actually, I don't even think that's a, that is that bad. From Ross. He does have a two Combi and a Vespa Queen in hand, it looks like. So you definitely kind of want to hold those. I think he is just going to hit for 60 here. Uh, no, he's going to go with the retreat here. Okay. Retreat to Flareon. Take the knockout. Yeah, this kind of makes most sense, right? Because they have the Vespa Queen Combi in hand for next turn. Yeah, this makes most sense. And I think he has, he put the DC on top. Uh, he can maybe even set up to just win the game. Uh, Guzma DCE, knock out a Lele, uh, which I think is probably what he would go for. Uh, Ian knows he just kind of has to go for N here. Um, disrupt his opponent's hand. Yep, there's the N. So Ian needs to hit trash Lance, Psychic, and Ability Lock Garb really to have any chance of winning this game. Even if he hits uh, Psychic trash Lance, that's almost... Definitely not going to stop Ross from winning the game on his next turn through just... If he just gets able to knock out the Pokemon, that pretty much wins Ross the game. So we really need to see Ian hit everything here. And I don't think he actually hit anything here as he retreats to Trubbish and passes back over to Ross. Now Ross doesn't really have that much of a deck left, uh, but all he really needs to do is find a DCE and he pretty much wins the game. I think he's got like a, a five or six card deck left. Has an Ultra Ball. I think he's debating using it at all right here. I think you just go ahead and use it here as Ross. Then, then those cards out of your deck. Yeah, Ultra Ball those two away. You don't need those anymore. Eh, more like a 10 card deck. Probably grab, yeah, grab the Combi. Then Premonition, look at the top cards. Only one DCE left and only one Guzma left. But that's all you really need to win the game here as Ross. Is just that DCE and that Guzma. Um, the only way I think Ian can ever win this game now is like Guzma up the... Sepshrika? No, that wouldn't even work because you have a DC on the flare. So it's almost impossible to lose here as Ross. I can't even come up with a way for Ross to lose here. He just needs to uh, just needs to win. Premonition top five. I think you just throw go ahead and throw the DCE on top or you throw Juniper on top and then put DCE second. I have no idea what he put on top there. But oh, he's going with the sprint here. Okay, that makes more sense. I was like, is he just going to pass with that? No, but yeah. He goes ahead and sprints. So that makes sense. Sprints has DC, has Juniper. Should be no way for him to lose the game. Um, he's just counting total Pokemon here. It looks like it's a lot <laughs> doing a lot of damage. I think, yeah, Ross should be able to just kind of one shot anything 16, 18 Pokemon. Yeah, and there's the knockout. He has DC in hand. He has a supporter in hand. Shouldn't be anything stopping Ross from winning this game at this point. I don't think there's a wonder tag from Ian probably for, oh, he's going for the Guzma. Uh, so you just hoping Guzma was enough. No, he just wants to thin out his deck that much more. And he goes dowsing for N. Same situation from Ian. He needs Trash Lanch, Psychic, and Ability Lock Arb. We haven't seen him see a Psychic all game. Um, so even though this is not a great matchup for Ian with the with the way his deck is built, doesn't have the Oracorio, doesn't have that many one by the Tigers. He just hasn't been drawing like anything. 
there's four and yeah ian just go ahead and goes ahead and scoops couldn't find a psychic energy couldn't find a garbador couldn't find anything there at the end and ross just eventually closes it out there in game two so two all victory for ross here in round two that's kind of how i expect this matchup to go when you don't play the oracorio from ian's side um which i kind of you know i would just ex assume any draft guard player would include the Oracorio. I guess Ian did not expect Vespa Queen to be super popular here, but he goes ahead and hits it in round two. That is why the matchup is usually favored for Drampa Garp, because you have the Oracorio, you have the Stretcher and the Super Rod, so you can use it a ton of times, plus the Dowsing, so you can kind of just use it like, it might be your only attacker for the whole game. You open with a Lele, force the Pokemon to the discard pile, and there's Oracorio every turn from there with combined with teammates. But we see Ian not running the Oracorio, and it's pretty, uh, Pretty easy 2-0 here from Ross. There wasn't there was a couple speed bumps, but nothing huge. The first game he just kind of drew poorly in the opening, but then pretty easily able to close it out there at the end. Um, the only the only play from from Ian I saw. I think he definitely should have attached with, attacked with Drampa when he didn't on that one turn, and then from Ross. I think there was there was definitely a couple sequencing errors in my opinion. And then in this one here in game two, the one freshest in my mind is the battle compressor where he just chose not to play the second battle compressor before he farewell lettered when his hand was dead and then he chose to not ultra ball for anything uh once his hand was also dead he had a, i think his hand was ultra ball muck mr mime at battle compressor special charge or something like that and he was just like pass knowing ian could get ability lock garb up next turn and doesn't have to end ross on his next turn so that play uh, was a little weird to me as well. So I think a couple missteps and sequencing errors here from Ross, but he does have him taking it 2-0 and moving on to 2-0. And that's going to go ahead and do it here for round two at Dallas Regionals, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy the video, give it a like. If you're enjoying the content, subscribe. Uh, be sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm always open to discussing plays and such in the comment section down below. To make it easier uh, or even possible for me to discuss them with you guys, though, make sure you put a timestamp of what what part of the video you're talking about um if i missed anything same thing put a timestamp. otherwise it's if you just say uh what happened or what you think should have happened uh if there's no timestamp, it's really hard for me to follow along um but yeah go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below check out my live stream social media links in the description below thanks for watching and have a good day and peace